everybody, and welcome to Just Another Nerdy Podcast. That's off. <laughs> Nick, can you square up that camera real quick? Here we go. This is our new cameraman, Nick. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I. It's so sad. I can only do it. I can. I can only get so much with these chairs. Like they don't give what bodies actually square the like frame the whole picture out. So I try to like square it up, and it always ends up terrible. Okay, well, welcome anybody, uh, everybody, anybody and everybody Jamie. to Just Another Nerdy Podcast. I'm Jay. Nick. Tiana. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about your weekly nerdy news and other nerdy fun, uh, but a few quick announcements. Uh, if you're watching this live, feel free to hit us up on YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, um, Facebook, Twitter. We have buttons down below our Discord. We have a Discord that is officially set up and active now. And we have a, a, our own personal gnat to bother us as we are <laughs> we're streaming. <laughs> Anyways, um, so uh, there are buttons down below. If you're watching us live, you can click on that. If you're listening to us uh, afterwards or watching us on YouTube, uh, you can. Actually, there will be links in the description down below for everything. So you can click on those things as well and follow us there. Um uh, again, if you want to listen to us, you know, while mowing or doing some homework or whatever, you can download us on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, CastBox, all sorts of things. Uh, put a little nerdy in your pocket. Mm -hmm. Or you can watch us on YouTube or you can watch us live every Wednesday around 11. Uh, and then also a little quick homework. We actually are doing a streamer highlight series now. So this week I did an interview with... The Batsy Queen Zalthara. Uh, she kind of gave us a little bit of her story about how she got into streaming, about her success as a streamer, uh, some of the charity work she does. She actually does charity for a bat sanctuary right oh, now cool. um, in Pennsylvania. So that's really awesome. And then um, she talks a little bit uh, just about some of her niche um, or niche. Niche? 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 Her niche? I think it's Nietzsche. Her Nietzsche? <laughs> She talks about her philosophy. <laughs> uh, anyways, she talks a little bit about what makes her special on Twitch. Uh, interestingly enough, she talks about um, uh, bats in goth culture. I I thought that, because I asked her uh, what her niche was, and she's like, it, bats. And I was like, cool, she likes bats. And she's like, no. Um, like, And she breaks down, at least from her perspective, what bats are um, in her culture so she talks about this idea that people are like uh, misunderstood unique um people avoid them uh so she is the queen of bats so to speak and it's not the queen of just regular bats although she does love regular bats mm -hmm. because she does charity work <laughs> this totally sounds up my alley yeah she's yeah, really so. really cool she's a lot of fun <laughs> she's an artist uh she can draw so she does a lot of streams where she's actually just doing her artwork uh, she does do commission work for people, so if you ever want to check her out, feel free. She she you can hit her up. Uh, she does commission work. Uh, and the next week we are going to be doing. Oh, who is this? Hey, my sister's in. Hi. You watch later. Need to crash. Yeah, you've probably been up playing WoW all night, haven't you? <laughs> all right. <laughs> next week we have a uh, pink Smurf. She's another successful uh, streamer who is doing fantastic. Um, the first month or so are people that I actually follow myself that I watch consistently. Uh, so, um, I've got a good four people lined up and, uh, next week around 5 PM on Monday, you can watch me live interviewing pink Smurf, or you can just check it out on YouTube later or download the podcast as well. Put a little nerdy in your pocket as well. Uh, so we'll be getting to know her story, what she feels <coughs> her niche is, um, what, are, what she feels her Nietzsche is, um, <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to learn quite a bit more. So that's that's enough advertisement there for that. And then uh, today, after the podcast, you can check us out at senior.com slash jamp, J-A-N-P, uh, just another nerdy podcast. Um, senior is actually a pretty cool app. It's kind of like Twitch for TV. Um, except for we don't stream live, you'll be able to watch our broadcast later on. But it's like watching TV with your friends. So, if we are your friends. <laughs> <laughs> so today, uh, in celebration, we're actually going to be watching uh, The Monster Squad. 
So that is a one of my Halloween favorites. I don't, have you, you seen? Didn't you see that for the first time like a year or two ago? Yeah, and it was awesome. It's good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Nick, you've seen it. Mm-hmm. Okay, I was gonna say, uh, Tiana and Nate have not. No. Um, it is kind of like if you can imagine the Goonies. Um, yes, it's Goonies. But if you dial the quality meter down a little. And then throw monsters in there. So, uh, I, I'm gonna readdress. It's like Goonies, but big bag, uh, big bad Beetleborgs without <laughs> the Beetleborg costumes. I guess I don't know. Um, so it's it's fantastic though. It's it's really hokey. It's really cheesy. Um, there's, there's, there's a lot of things. The Wolfman is actually probably one of the scariest Wolfmans I've ever seen. He's got narts too. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> so uh look forward to checking that out again you can check us out at uh scener s-c-e-n-e-r dot com slash jamp uh you can go there i, I already put up my initial re-reactions to the first episode of stargate sg1 last night mm-hmm. that was my test and i might actually stick it out because there's a lot of stargate sg1 but uh again anything if you have a hulu or and or netflix account you can go on uh you can watch live with people you can follow them you can kind of see what they're watching so i definitely did stargate sg1 last night and today we're gonna be doing monster squad later on we're gonna be doing lots and lots of more fun so we're gonna have more content coming out here and a lot more fun so you should do a zombie movie so you're terrified while you do it <sighs> i thought about it i thought about that uh what's that netflix series now that's like haunting on the hill or something yeah. like that yeah i've hill heard house or something like yeah that. hill house or I've heard it's super scary, and I'm not sure I'm down for Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry, Tiana. <laughs> <laughs> Where did it go? Hang on. Okay, there we go. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna make this. <laughs> I didn't look before I just dropped it in. Oh, this is... Okay, so for nerdy news this week, guys, uh, we're talking a little bit about um, all the fun this week. So... Uh, knocking out nerdy news early. Elseworlds is going to be the uh, the uh, CW like special. John uh, ship. Yeah. <laughs> so well, so is it's going to be the big CW DC superhero crossover special. They're only doing three episodes this year instead of four because the Legends of Tomorrow series isn't going to be a part of it. Um, but what's confusing is if you look at this picture, and we've addressed this before, but we'll just kind of readdress. Um, the guy who plays the Flash, Grant Gustin, is going to play Green Arrow in this. I wonder and if uh, if that picture is just unflattery, or if that suit doesn't quite fit right. Well, so the thing is, is so that's the guy who plays the Flash. He's doing Green Arrow, and then the guy who plays Green Arrow is playing the Flash. And the thing about it is, is Grant Gustin is just sort of a lanky guy, I and see. I think that was on purpose. Okay. So then they stick him, and then they stick um, Stephen Amell, who plays the Green Arrow in the Flash costume, and he's fucking jacked. Like, Stephen Amell is a big guy. Yeah, he is. So, to shove him in a Flash costume, and it, and, and I, I think he might be pretty well gifted, because, like, a lot of the commentary on the picture is about his bulge. <laughs> <laughs> like... So, congratulations, Stephen Amell and your wife. Uh, <laughs> but, like, the noticeable thing here. So, that's been the big thing. They're going to have Batwoman. They also have uh, Superman in the black Superman outfit. Mm-hmm. So, um, that's pretty exciting. Uh, th- but this time, they're showing John Wesley Shipp in his original Flash costume. I loved that show. Yeah. <laughs> and, well, so John Wesley Shipp's actually been on the Flash series for a while. He, he plays... plays dad, right? He uh, like plays his dad, and then he plays uh, Jay Gehrig, who is like old man Flash, like nice. the the first first Flash. So that's pretty exciting. Like they're they're getting him in the Flash costume again, and it's kind of funny because I was reading some commentary where someone was like, you know, I asked him years ago, um, like oh, a little while ago when he was on the Flash panel, like, are you ever going to don that costume again? And he said no. Mm-hmm. And they're like, he lied to me. And I'm like, yeah. I don't think he lied. I think it's just like, at that point, no one knew that this was coming. <laughs> like, I thought it would seem really hokey or something next to the uh, modern costumes, but it holds up better than I thought it would. It actually <laughs> holds up better than Stephen Amell in the modern costume. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then, of course, we have uh, Supergirl, who is 
just plain Supergirl. Like, there's there doesn't seem to be anything weird about that so far, but we're going to have to see what the whole Elseworlds comic is about. <clears throat> Uh, for those of you who don't know, Elseworlds is a comic series where they just kind of do whatever they want. Yeah. Like they don't they don't focus on canon or it's anything like, like that. It's kind of like Marvel's What If series, I would say. Yeah, yeah. Like, and what if this happened in this? Yeah, only stupid answers. I actually was just watching this before you guys pulled in. Uh, did a whole series on their favorite Elseworlds comics, and they have like um, there's the Marvel slash DC, like so the Batman Wolverine. Mm-hmm mixture um joker slash saber tooth which is hyena yeah Yeah, so that that's one of them uh i didn't know all-star superman was in the elseworlds universe but that's Mm. that's pretty cool that's uh Um, i don't know if it's a universe it's kind of uh or elseworlds um collection collection. i guess you would say yeah Yeah. or anthology or whatever so it doesn't it doesn't combine because they're able to do all that stuff so it's a lot of fun uh so the fact that cw is tackling this i'm very intrigued to see yeah. how they approach it and how they did it um the first crossover they did everyone really really liked i thought it was okay um because they did it was the first time they had they were fighting aliens and most of these characters have never dealt with aliens before they've dealt with the supernatural and they've dealt with superpowers but then they were like aliens oh and it was like <laughs> Is it really a bridge too far? Like, <laughs> uh, the interdimensional travel they had dealt with, and then they're like, aliens, we've never <laughs> thought of this. Uh, and then the second crossover they did, it was interdimensional travel where, like, all the superheroes were on a Nazi planet, mm-hmm. and the Nazi superheroes come to attack them. So they're fighting themselves, but in Nazi form. Ironically, around the time of the whole Charleston issue like in the political atmosphere like that and wolfenstein 2 got released at the same time not on perp like this was not planned and 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 so it added some interesting commentary but again like it, it just shows like everyone's in line with you know fuck nazis um but uh nazi green arrow was super cool nazi <laughs> supergirl was super cool um i don't think i've actually seen this particular issue uh, it's the the nazi stuff yeah i hadn't seen any of that oh it was it's been about a year now but there was like a big i mean a big uprising of like um to be fair i haven't followed dc for so yeah long well this was i mean this was a, a pretty cool comic uh series but this i mean they did the yeah they did the not the it was it was like planet x was the nazi planet um Ah, it's just so cool. It was so cool. And you get to see, like, different versions. They actually gave you the Captain Cold from the comic books <laughs> this time, except for he was Citizen Freeze or something like Citizen that. I can't remember. Freeze. He was so good, though. <laughs> he was so good. I grew up more on Dark Horse comics than I did on, like, Marvel or DC, so I'm actually not super familiar. Like, I'm definitely not familiar with DC much at all. That's Marvel in a little bit. Dark but... Horse is good. Dark Horse, and it, like a lot of the more obscure Dark Horse, like Elf Quest is a huge, one of the huge Dark Horse ones that I grew up on, and I've read almost all of the Elf Quest comics, which are finally starting to come to a close and stuff like that. But oh wow! But yeah, my family like raised me on all the Dark Horse ones. Well, that's fun. But, yeah, I am so. I well so th- I keep up with like the TV and then I've been actually reading uh comics like comic posts lately. There's a lot of posts on things that are happening in the comic books. So I guess like something I just read and it'll be posted on our Facebook later today. Uh they have like a an old old lady Harley Quinn series now. Mm-hmm. And I'm like that's really interesting. Like she actually lives to be older. Um, this is canon with um, her being broken away from the Joker. She's like, I'm done with the Joker. You know, it's an unhealthy relationship. And it shows her as an old person survivor. And, like, they, they just had a post where she, like, murdered the penguin. Yeah. Like, it's pretty cool. Like, but then it sends her spiraling a little bit back to her older way. So then she starts wanting to go back with the Joker. I guess that's where they left at in this series. But... I, so it shows her like what in like her senior years like yeah in her... they did that on batman beyond it was pretty interesting oh yeah i haven't even it's been forever 
And then they they also had on the Marvel side they had a uh, old man Thor slash mm-hmm. old man Logan. They're the last two living beings in the universe, and Thor is the king of hell. And Wolverine has actually been inhabited by the Phoenix Force. Oh, really? so and they have a throwdown, and you get to see who lives through that. So like I I read those posts and kind of read about it, but unfortunately I'm not able to read the comics very yeah, often. I've just read the first Old Man Logan trade. It's pretty good. I uh I I actually watched like a motion comic on YouTube about it, and it was incredible. Like Old Man Logan. Uh, I should I shouldn't go on this rant, but I'm going to. <laughs> um, I don't like the Logan movie that much. Um, really? And it's only because of reading the comic book Old Man Logan, and I know they can't do what they did in Old Man Logan because of all the comic continuity issues. They can now, um, as of like January, the Disney Fox murders finished, but uh, before then they couldn't do that. And so, like, I get that they had to kind of settle on some stuff, but the thing about it is, like, the X-Men series has been so awesome because it's been less grounded. Mm -hmm. Like, Days of Future Past, like, cut the chain on grounding things. And then they want to make this swan song to this character that's been in, like, 17 movies over so many odd years. And, or not 17 movies, I think it was, like, 9 movies over 17 years. Um... And they ground it so much. I just don't like when they overly ground things. Like, and they ground Logan as well. Like, he's not able to do all the cool stuff. Flash to old man Logan. He's in the fucking Iron Man suit, rocketing across the U.S. to get home as fast as he can from Washington, uh, D.C. to California. Like, and he, like, and this thing's barely functioning anymore. Like, you know, there are symbiote dinosaurs, um, like Spider-Woman, the Hulk, uh, uh, Iron, like Red Skull. They all have their own, like, territories in the U.S. Like, it's it's the maximum of this suspend your disbelief and see the fantastic that's out there. And then you, you go to the movie that's supposed to be using that as a, like, source material, and they overly ground it. Like, they have robot guys, and that's it. I disagree. <laughs> I, I I just, that's just, to me, I was like, eh, you know, like, my pinnacle swan song for the X-Men franchise will always be X-Men Days of Future Past. And I think if they had actually retired the Hugh Jackman Wolverine there, it would have been my favorite ending. Because it, it I don't know, it takes all the problems and it fixes it, and, and it, like, Davis Ex Machina's it, and then it just kind of shows him, like, he's all right. He's He is the Logan that we know, and they end it. They're like, done. Like, that's it. And, and it leaves it up to your own imagination. But it was it was so fantastic, like, the whole Days of Future Past. Like, it was the peak of that's climax. Good. I liked it. <sighs> I don't know. I don't. I don't like Logan. Anyways, <laughs> well, the way they would have to do uh, Logan is they'd have to, you know, Marvel Universe the whole thing for it to make any sense at all. You know, they'd have to do stuff on like Cannibal Hulk, and they had to do stuff on all these little bits so that when they show the movie, it wouldn't just look like throwing random shit everywhere. You know, <laughs> that's true. Well, it's its own. I think it's its own Elseworld. If you think about it, mm-hmm. like it's its own, and that's why I don't know. I don't know. They don't, but that's the thing. Like, they don't have to do Cannibal Hulk. They don't have to do Symbiote Dinosaur. I like to see Cannibal Hulk. They have enough. To do. <laughs> I would. Well, if he pops up, I'd crap myself. But like, <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, they could come up with like cr- more creative ways than just a couple of robot dudes and all the mutants are dead. Mm-hmm. Like the X Men universe is so like so unique and so big. It just I don't know. Yeah. It is a very small ending to a very big universe. And, and I'm not going to say it's a bad movie. I think a movie on its own. As a movie on its own, it's amazing. As a sequel to the X-Men series and the swan song to Hugh Jackman, I, I don't like it there. It's as much as I think Last Jedi is an amazing movie on its own. As a Star Wars sequel, it's not great. Hey, Jay, Nick, and Queen of the Nerdy Podcast, Tiana. Hey. Nice. <laughs> you got a whole, like, you got a whole title there. I did. I feel fancy. We're summed up within four letters or less. Yeah, yeah. Four letters or less. That's Jay and Nick. Yep. <laughs> 
So, okay, so next piece of nerdy news. Um, both Luke Cage and Iron Fist have been canceled by Netflix. Uh, season three of those shows will not be happening. It's pretty bummed about Luke Cage. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I've heard a lot of theories on this. Yeah, well, me too. So the biggest theory is that they're going to hopefully do a Heroes for Hire. I would like to see that. Um, <laughs> which would be cool. I'm sorry. There's... As you guys know, I work cons for a living, and I work like with the talent and stuff that comes in. The there is an agent that works with a lot of the talent that comes in, and the one of the specific agents, her company is called Heroes for Hire, and a mm-hmm. lot of these talent, specifically for these shows, works that like that's her company is Heroes oh, for Hire. Awesome. <laughs> so, maybe, maybe they'll turn that into a TV show. So, <laughs> yeah, that would actually wouldn't that be a great? If you say Heroes for Hire. <laughs> That's wouldn't, where my brain goes. Well, wouldn't, okay, so imagine this, right? Okay, so they advertise Heroes for Hire, the Netflix Marvel series. They release it as like a 10 episode series. And all the advertisements that they have are just clips for the Heroes for Hire working on the Heroes for Hire stuff <laughs> for the cons. And the show is actually about them doing con work. And then at the end, it's just, you've been conned. <laughs> <laughs> And Netflix is like, I'll never give you what you want. Um, no, so so I thought what I thought was was they would do a Heroes for Hire, which is very possible. Um, and then um, my thought was that what they could do is they could open up more slots for Moon Knight, for Blade, for Ghost Rider. However, the the discussion is is that because Disney is doing this this new streaming service, they're trying to hoard all other properties that they don't have contractual obligations with. Yep. So they're not giving them anything more. So those that's, things aren't going to probably happen. That's what I had heard. Or like, that's the theory that I've heard is that because Disney's going to be starting doing streaming service, they're now pulling all of the new shows that when they start their own streaming service, they're going to start now moving all those shows into well, I, streaming. So they Which have a, sense. they have a contractual obligation with Netflix on these characters. So this is going to be another, like, Sony, Fox, Disney bullshit game, it, mm-hmm. to me it seems like. Is they're going to, these, they're going to hoard the, the Defenders while Disney hoards their characters, and thus it's going to limit a little bit some of the product, which is kind of unfortunate. When, when Disney was just working with Netflix, it was, it was incredible, but now that they're trying to do their own thing, which... It frustrates me because I know it's going to be successful. Like, I don't want it to be. Like, I don't want to pay for another service. Yeah. I don't want you. people to have to pay for another service. But it's going to be successful because it's Disney. So that means... And, and Netflix is going to stay con- successful because they have amazing content. Like, mm-hmm. right. uh, uh, um, Altered Carbon. The second that season two of that comes out, I'm binging that one overnight. Um, there's absolutely no way I'm not. Um, so, so yeah, so that's another thing that I thought that they could do is they could do a heroes for hire. Um, they could also split off and do a daughters of the dragon because they're, they've been working on that with Misty Knight and, oh no. Calling mine. Yeah. Um, so they could just do a split off series there because they do deserve their own show. Like they are actually probably more interesting than oh, both saying. Luke Cage and Iron Fist. Yeah, Definitely I, Iron Fist. I watched the rest of Iron Fist. That ending. I've I've <laughs> seen the I've seen the ending. I was spoiled on it's the just ending. Out of nowhere, I absolutely. Still nowhere. haven't even watched season one of Iron Fist. I haven't gotten into it yet. I'll sum it up for you, okay? <laughs> I am the immortal Iron Fist. Floppy hair, floppy hair, floppy hair. <laughs> That's, That's it. I fought the dragon. Much why I haven't <laughs> yeah. watched it. I punched the dragon. I earned this. The hand is after me. Floppy hair, floppy hair, floppy hair. The, the the ending of it is so out of nowhere. I thought that it got canceled and then they made the ending. But then I found out that they made the ending and then they got canceled. Yeah. Which is <laughs> frustrating. It's almost like they tried to sum up a whole other season in like five seconds. Mm-hmm. Like, okay. <laughs> So they did say they did not say this about Luke Cage, which is a which is worrisome. But they did say they went out of their way to say that Iron Fist will be in other properties. Yeah, they didn't say anything about. Luke. They did not say that with Luke Cage, which is like, is that because it's a given? Because Luke Cage is. I feel that's a given. 
yeah. far more interesting and and a far better character. I feel that's a good yeah. um than the Iron Fist. I I haven't seen Iron Fist, so I'm still trudging my way. Here's the thing: Luke Cage is good, but yes. I don't know why. But I have to trudge through it. A lot like of people do. Or wait, Luke Cage? Yeah, Luke Cage. Like I have to really trudge through season two. That's I don't an know. issue that I have with like the whole thing in general is that they have. They want to make it so long at like 10 to 13 episodes, but they don't always have 10 to 13 episodes. Yeah. (laughs) Well, so I'm, and I'm kind of bummed because I'm waiting on Luke Cage for Iron Fist to show up because I heard that that episode is really, really cool on its own. It's pretty good. But I looked and I'm like, it's pretty far away. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm digging the Colleen Wing Misty Night shit. Um, But like, like Luke's got this drama with Claire right now and I just don't care. I don't care. And the, the, what's weird is, is like, Mike Coulter's a very handsome man, but there's like this scene where he gets kind of violent and he like breaks some walls and shit. Mm-hmm. And he turns around and he realizes what he's done. And his face changes when he looks angry and sad. Like, it was the weirdest thing. I was like, whoa. Like, like I don't know. It, uh, it threw me. There's so many times where I watch shows where I'm just like, I don't care. I just yeah. don't care. I don't give a shit. I'm still trudging, and that's and I want to get to Iron Fist season two because I heard it's much better than season one. I would not say much, but it is. Better. Oh, <laughs> well. <laughs> Does he still floppy hair? Flop? Well, oh, they yeah. they cut his hair down, mm-hmm. which he's is nice. Floppy hair. Season one, he's just got this like I mean, it just flops everywhere, and he flips it around. The angrier he gets, <laughs> so I'm the immortal Iron Fist, <laughs> and I'm like, you gotta chill, bro. Come on, um, good hair. He's just as yeah. angsty, if not more so, but he doesn't have floppy hair. I don't understand <laughs> the angst. Like, it's this character is supposed to be zen and chill. And in the first episode, when he, like, meets this random hobo, that was that was it. Like, that was the moment. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It, uh, ah! It's better. It's watchable. Uh, oh, so, yeah, Nick, I figure you could probably talk a little more about this because okay. you, you did some research on this. But Jordan Peele had said that he really wants to do a Gargoyles Is this going to be live, live action, action Gargoyles? Live action Gargoyles. Yeah. He wanted to do it. Disney Oof. kind of froze him out about it, though. He, like, stormed in. You know, he's Oscar winner now. He's like, I want to do this. And Disney's like, we'll get back to you on that. Which is kind of like, you know, mm. maybe we'll wait until you lose interest and then we'll just not say <laughs> anything. Adventure of Iron Fist in his floppy hair. <laughs> I would like I would kill for like a happy Iron Fist and and keep his floppy hair like I can't do both. Yeah, I'd really like to see um, girls for hire. I'd really like to see. I'm sorry, I'm just never gonna get over that. What? You guys just keep saying you're really for like hire to see. Uh... Where my oh goes. yeah. <laughs> well, so here's the other thing about that show too is they could actually if they really wanted to they could retcon in Jessica Jones as well. So if it, if Jessica Jones ever falls in ratings, they could bring her in because. She's actually supposed to be married to Luke Cage. Eventually, yeah. Uh, and it's a weird thing where they keep pushing other characters towards their opposite. Mm-hmm. Because Misty Knight is supposed to end up with Iron Fist, but he's with her best friend, Colleen Wing. Yeah, it's her not, own thing. They're not going to do that. <laughs> it's Yeah, it's, well, yeah, and those two, I don't see it. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> I don't it see it. They're not going to do that. I it think their chemistry would be poorly, yeah. poorly tested. So okay, but yeah, if, if this ever happened, though, I would probably cry. Yeah, if because... they got Keith David to do the voice of Goliath, oh my god, I would lose my mind. He has one of the best voices I've ever heard. He's still fantastic he too. Is, like yeah. he was doing, uh, he did like a season of Community that was just gold. Yeah. Like he was so good. He will never stop being fantastic. I know. <laughs> Uh, oh, Disney is wanting to reboot Pirates of the Caribbean. No. No. I, no. I, I just want no. To, this is... Why? Just, <laughs> no. Here's the thing. Okay? First one's pretty good. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Like, all, all other properties aside, like Marvel, comic books, it all makes sense. Pirates of the Caribbean, the thing about it is, is like, it was that magical thing that no one expected. I don't think even the crew and the staff expected when they hired Johnny Depp to make Captain Jack Sparrow. It was it was a special thing. It's something that will live on its own forever. But you don't need to do it again. You don't need to do it again. Like, first of all, the last movie left a huge left it open for a sequel where they had Orlando Bloom and Kira Knightley like Kira Knightley? They Kira... weren't even in the last few movies. 
They were in the last one at the very end. The one that just, the, the very yeah. most recent one? The like, yeah. fifth one that just came out? Yeah. At the very end, they came back. And they left a big cliffhanger for a sequel. And then they ended it. And, and so they, they don't need to reboot it. If anything, just finish that goddamn story. No. And that'd be no, it. No, I don't no. I wouldn't want the no. Well, so here's the problem, right? Just, just... Johnny Johnny Depp is done being Jack Sparrow. He was done after the third movie because if you watch the fourth and the fifth movie, you can see how defeated he is. The He's whole movie, out. he is like, "I'm here for money, not like for fun." Money on the corners. The the last movie, they just made him a drunk idiot, which really pissed <laughs> me off because I'm like, he is supposed to look like a drunk idiot, but he's not at all a drunk idiot. He knows exactly what's happening at all times. <clears throat> And then they, oh, they don't. They don't need to do a reboot. Just let this thing be what it is. Yeah, I don't even think they needed to do a sequel once. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Well, well after I... the first, like the first movie was great. After that, I, I remember the ride as a kid. I was really? pissed off when they changed the ride to match the movie. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. You well, have to so... do that. Like, you have like, you have like ten Johnny Depp's riddled throughout that whole thing like you don't need him everywhere <laughs> in that re- like he i went I yeah i just went that. a little while ago 10 johnny, depps, 10 johnny depps 10 johnny depps that's the name of the movie and yeah. it's directed and written by kevin smith uh, <laughs> 10 johnny depps uh let's see is there anything oh yeah comic book wise uh so oh, they're doing geez. a nightwing series Nightwing uh, has forgotten his identity. Amnesia. He's got amnesia because he was head of him. And, and, and now he's... He's, and now he's, yeah. he's changed his name from Dick Grayson to Rick Grayson. Yeah, that's not really news. Yeah. From Dick well, to Rick. I mean... I don't know. It was a big thing and I just wanted to say I mean, how it, silly it, it is. It is news, but I mean, they're they're making it out to be more than... I don't know. He's like a doctor now or something? I don't remember. That's so, weird. Yeah. It's, okay. Dick, yeah, see, that's, Dick Grayson uh, is now Rick Grayson. That's, Rick Grayson. They're like, he has a big change, big name change. It's like if I change my name from, from Nick Dick to, to Nicky. I'm what's, like, oh, I'm different now. Or Nick to Rick to Dick. Yeah. yeah you're Dick. <laughs> what's the main character's name in Walking Dead? Oh. Oh, Rick. Rick. Isn't it? Rick. Oh, Grimes? Rick Grimes? Oh, never mind. Okay. okay. I was Did he change it like... to Dick Grimes? <laughs> no, it was, I remember it was Rick something, but I was like, wait a minute. That sounds like the same thing oh no it's rick grimes okay yeah, it's just stuff like uh <laughs> what is christopher uh I'm, i think oh jack sparrow was just supposed to be in the first one johnny depp was so good in it they kept him in that sounds I'm, about right i am i'm a minority i enjoyed the second and third um Pirates of the Caribbean. But that was because there was a continuity that went through the whole thing. I understand that the second and third were their own thing. I enjoyed it. I thought it was all right. I thought the second and third were okay. Like I uh, I don't think they should have made a fourth and fifth. They didn't need to make a fourth and fifth. At all. Until they got Kira Knightley and Orlando Bloom back in the mix. No. There's really no point. No. I, I'll be honest. There was So here's the thing. On the fifth one... There's a lot of really good work there. The fact that they had their like their son, the son of those two, little whatever Turner, I don't remember his name, uh, and then they had the daughter of Barbosa. That was really cool. However, because Johnny Depp is so done and cashed it in so hard, and they all just kind of forgot about the fact that Jack like Jack Sparrow is awesome and decided to make him a drunk buffoon. Um, that ruined the whole movie. They had good elements to work with. They just don't, the only thing they don't have is, is the best thing is Johnny Depp. Like, he's mm-hmm. done. He's out. He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm good. Yeah, so this, <sighs> this uh, Rick Grayson story, I mean, it might be good. I haven't read it, but just from what I've heard, you know, had a head injury, he got amnesia, now he's going by a very, very, very slightly different name. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> just, I just, well, so my question is, if he has amnesia, does he know his name? Like, does he know his name at all? Maybe not. Because he changed it from Dick to Rick. <laughs> if that's a guess, that's Wait, even funnier. He has like, amnesia? Yes. That's yeah. the whole point? He that's bumped his head. Point. And he's a doctor? Hey, well, he, who's, who's he this just, person here? What's their name? Something tells me that this talk show will never... What? Wow. Pick up much audience? Oh, okay. Well, that's thanks. <laughs> uh, what's the name of the person? Borbane. 
Boring! Welcome to Just Another Nerdy Podcast. Well, if it doesn't pick up much audience, you can be our audience. How about that one? We'd like to hang out with you. Okay, so uh, let's see here. Oh, Shane West as Bane has been revealed for Gotham. It's like when they brought in Doomsday on Smallville. Yeah. Um, this is the the picture of him. I don't. I don't know. I don't really. That's <laughs> supposed to be Bane. Yeah. Yeah. He. So here's the thing. Shane West is actually pretty fit. Um, he doesn't need no all of that robot really shit. Weird. So. Yeah, he doesn't need all that robot shit. Why not, uh... Why not just, uh... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, uh, the hair is also a weird thing, because I don't think Bane normally has hair. Did he have... Uh, he always he said some hair of it. in yeah, the, the comic books, but... He does have... Okay. Yeah, it depends on which story, but... It was inspired like, largely he... by the wrestlers and, uh... Like the Middle American Westerns or Mexican Westerns. Just, like... In that kind of area. He looks like he's wearing a fluffy huh. down jacket. Well, I'm, I'm assuming that's probably its ode to The Dark Knight Rises, maybe. I don't know. It could be. Uh, the robot shit is what confuses me. Yeah. Uh, of course, this is just like a first look, so who knows if this is, you know, what it's... Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, oh, Young Justice... Mm. Release date is going to be December, I think, 21st, and it is immediately following the end of Titans. So as, when Titans is finished on the DC uh, TV streaming services, Young Justice is going to start. I've only seen a little bit of that, but it looks Almost it's been really yeah. good. A Titans? What I've seen. Uh, Young Justice. Young Justice. Oh, Young Justice. I binged yeah. the first two seasons. That show is fantastic. Yeah, it looks really good. I'm, um, I'm my favorite thing is, is in season two, they do a five-year jump. They have a cliffhanger, mm -hmm. and then they do a five-year jump, and then they work their way back and forward at the same time. That's cool. And it is mind-blowing. I was going to say, I think I've seen season one of it, but I don't think I've seen... Oh, season two. season two is my favorite. So I'm excited about season three. I kind of hope they do another time jump, and it seems like they might. Um, it probably won't be as extreme, but it was like a five-year time jump. I hear Titans is not as bad as the marketing you made it out to be. I have heard the same thing, yeah. actually. Based, like, I've seen, I saw a bunch of pictures of it, and I saw a bunch of, like, trailers. It looked awful, but then I've heard really good things about it. Everyone that I've heard reviews about it, it seems like it's... As I've heard Titans has been actually pretty good. Yeah, well, Tommy, so Tommy was talking about, he actually <laughs> watched it. He was saying that, um, I guess, uh, so everyone was complaining about how Starfire looks like a prostitute. <laughs> I guess she's actually a prostitute. Oh, well, Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's actually a prostitute in the show. Like, that's how it starts off. She's a prostitute. Then she gets into a more comic accurate costume later on. So, um, that was weird. A thing, yeah. I don't I understand uh, Dick Grayson being a detective, like a real detective. I don't know if that's comic accurate or not. A little bit. I mean, well, he was Batman's protege, so. Oh no! Sorry, I was talking about the um, the prostitute thing. Oh, <laughs> I was going oh, back. Okay, yeah. Well, okay. with him being a detective, like <laughs> him actually getting into the Detroit PD and being a detective, it like does. a legit detective. But someone was saying like he could he could probably just falsify his identity. I'm named after a prostitute, no. like in a book. Oh! I, like, my mother told me growing up that I was named after, like, a character in a book that's, like, a fairy princess trying to, like, it was some sci-fi book, fairy princess, like, trying to save alternate realities or something, and then after I turned 18, my dad had mentioned something about being named after a hooker, and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Apparently, this girl on, on Earth was a hooker, and she got, like, thrown in into an alternate reality where she turned out she was actually the fairy princess of this alternate reality and i was like wait wait wait! so you named me after a fairy hooker yeah and he was like fairy hooker yep pretty much and i was like oh <laughs> thanks dad no other way some There's popular no sci-fi series that's Maybe still cool <laughs> i was actually named after the guy uh like one of the characters in big valley uh, his really? J A R R O D. Yeah, that's how they spell his name. Uh, it was either one of the actors or one of the characters. I want to say one of the actors. From old school uh, Western too. Really? Yeah, Nick. Wait, I, I can't remember if it was. It might have been Big Valley, but I can't remember if it was that or Bonanza. I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, we all. That's great. We all have like an actual <laughs> origin to our name. Yeah, my mother uh, just wanted an interesting name, and she was like, "Tiana sounds pretty." Like she was reading the book in the hospital. That's a good and I was name. like. 
this is great. Never mind the <laughs> fairy hooker. Can, right. can you imagine if I was like the first time she read it, like she was like starting to read it and there was like Tiana popped him. She's like, oh, oh great name. she names you that. She keeps reading the book. A week later, she's like, dear God, I knew my God. <laughs> like a hooker fairy princess. Hooker fairy We're princess. We're just going to say fairy princess. <laughs> yes. Uh, let's see if there's anything else. Nope, that's the Elseworlds comic. So that was the nerdy news for today. Oh, that is the wrong button. Spoilers! So, guys, what have you guys been up to today, this week? Have you done anything extra nerdy, extra fun? I fin- started and finished the Daredevil Season 3. You finished it? Wow. How'd you like it? It was... I want to oversell it, but it was really good. <laughs> oh, it was very... Okay. Um... Season wise, how would you rank it? It's uh, I've been trying to figure out if it's better than season one, in my head. Really? Yeah. It starts like, off real slow. Like they could probably sum up the first three episodes in one. But it gets <laughs> really good after that. So season like so everyone's kind of divided on season one because season one is, uh, like the first, the first part and the end was actually written and directed by Drew Goddard. Mm-hmm. Um, who was hired to be the showrunner, but then Drew dropped out to work on Spider Man, mm-hmm. and then never did. <laughs> um, He'd be good at it. Yeah, he would have like he would have been an amazing hire. They were trying to get him to sort of. Uh, oh, he was going to do Sinister Six when they were doing the Amazing Spider Man oh, well, setup. Maybe, maybe it's best that. And then it that. kind of fell apart <laughs> from there. It's and then best. yeah, and then Marvel and Sony worked their shit out. Um, at that point but anyways he had left it running daredevil and so they say that like season one kind of suffers from that because like the beginning and the end were fantastic but the middle was not very well worked out really? I really yeah liked it. i enjoy one. it um i i, I, I didn't like all of it, but... it didn't have like 99 percent on rotten tomatoes and... i have no idea i i just remember like the first initial reviews people being like yeah the beginning's awesome and the end is great but it just like all that middle stuff really um, didn't have a lot of because it was a lot of people putting their hands in the fire. Um, I didn't know that, about which then becomes a big issue. Like, uh, what else had that problem? I know the Fantastic Four reboot had that issue. Um, There's a few other like properties specifically where it's like some oh Solo, Solo was um, originally Chris Lord and. Miller? Something Miller. Phil Lord and Chris Miller. There we go. Sorry. Uh, the guys who did the Lego movie. They did Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. Those guys were all in charge. Hey, oh, hey, Soka G. Oh, it's about to get interesting. Uh, Soka G is like, yeah. Hey, Soka! <laughs> oh, I think I remember him. I remember. Soka G. Man, oh, it's buddy. probably the one that's most uh, rooted in realism, I think. It's the most realistic season of all the Netflix Marvel stuff. That's awesome. It's, I'm excited. It's, it's really good. Uh, starts, off, starts off rocky, but it gets really good. <laughs> well, that's good. Anything else you've been up to this week? or? Uh, well, I finished Iron Fist. It's not worth talking about, though. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. <laughs> Ouch. Well, damn. Uh, Tiana? Um, well, I performed on Saturday in Des Moines. Um, it was a, a Halloween show. So they did like an LED act. Oh my god! Then... Jay and Sophie G together forever. Uh, so okay, you you missed uh, on my actual stream on the Jay podcast. Someone was like, they clipped it too. I was or Jay podcast. I was just streaming. Uh, what was I playing? Maybe Portal. Um, and someone put in like a penis in like the actual chat. Mm-hmm. Like they, it was somehow a drawing of a penis. And, and they clipped out me being like, that's a nice penis, but I think you need a little more hair. It's a little smooth, smooth balls. They clipped the whole thing. And I was like, son of a bitch. <laughs> like, clipped the penis part, huh? Yeah. I was like, oh. <laughs> so you were performing. Uh, yeah. No, I did a, a Halloween show on Saturday. Let's see here. We are now up to season, we're almost up to season seven on Supernatural. It's dragging at this point. Oh, oh my god, it's so slow now. Oh yeah. I also started watching uh, Good Place. Oh, oh good. Yeah. How are you liking it? I like it. I'm probably halfway through season two. Oh time. my god. So I finished it. I, I'm done with Good Place. I'm. Oh. Or I'm caught up. Caught up. You're caught up. Okay. Um, my favorite. So did you watch the last episode? 
Uh, I think so. It was think. like, it's called like, um, oh, what's it? It's like, hold up, I could something pull. Beamer or something like that. Uno momento. The most recent one is Jeremy Baramy. Jeremy Baramy. Jeremy Baramy. Yep. So, without getting too much into spoilers, my favorite thing is is when they explain what Jeremy Baramy means. It is the concept of time in, like, the afterlife. So they talk about how our time goes straight, and they it's say that line. Jeremy Baramy, like, time goes back, and it goes forward, and, and it kind of loops back around, and it turns out, like, their t- concept of time spells out Jeremy Baramy. <laughs> <laughs> and the best part is when Chidi discovers the dot in the eye, he goes, what is that? And they're like, uh, that's like, you know, always, but sometimes, uh, also Tuesdays. <laughs> and it fucking breaks it. He's like, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, he goes, I'm just done. That broke me. <laughs> that right there broke me. I'm out. And he like, he literally full on snaps. Like it's a full snap. And I, I it's love that concept. Part. Like, yeah, that I think is, is my favorite part of the entire show is when it, he gets broken by the dot, by the over dot the eye, in the eye and in the time, time continuum line. Yeah, and I love the fact that that's like also Tuesdays. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, congratulations, Jay! You're so special. Oh, I've got You're, big hands. Uh, I have small hands. so... I want to get smashed by those big hands. My God, you are so hot. Yeah, my sister, like, she did not enjoy the the, the Soka G parts of the podcast last time. She was, like, not happy. I was like, <laughs> you know, you just got to roll with it. So, okay, are you in there messing with Travis on the on the Discord? Travis and uh, uh, Chris need your attention on the Discord. You need to go in there and, and troll their ass. Um, Wait, is one of those people Travis? No. No. Oh, okay. Travis is not on here, but Travis is actually in charge of our Discord. So the last time Soka G popped in... Um, yes, your, your, his sister Travis. They were fucking with Travis the whole time. And and Travis was like, so you try, you gotta give Travis his troll credit. Like, he, 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 he put up his dukes. He did a good job. <laughs> However, Soke did an amazing thing where Travis... So Soke was like, send nudes. And Travis put up a naked gerbil picture of Jimmy Neutron. Like, it's Jimmy Neutron with a gerbil body. It's from the actual show. And then they uh, Soke just erased the send nudes part. So now it looks like Travis is sending nudes. <laughs> <laughs> just out of nowhere. And he's like, I did not expect that. And I was like... <laughs> it was fantastic. Um, so yeah, so... Uh, the Good Place, though, is one of my top favorite shows. It's, it's good. Oh my god, it's so good. I love that show. Oh yeah, I, I laugh so hard almost every single episode. And Jason and Janet is, like, the best. I love how they keep coming back to Jason and, um, oh, what's her name? She, or, uh, oh god, no, I can't think of it either. It's the, it's the British lady. Mm-hmm. Um, anyways, they come back to her, and Janet has, like, a meltdown every time. <laughs> She's like, ha! Oh, no! <laughs> For a little while during like, the end of season one, uh, Jason character started wearing on me a little bit, but... Yeah. He, he, ha- he comes and he goes. He has, I think he has the most improvisational work to do, and he does, like, he, he, he does the most swings, like, he swings Tahani. at a bad joke. Tahani. Tahani, okay. He okay. swings at a bad joke the most often, and it is the most, the most humorous part. Like I really enjoy it. Uh, you're moving to Tommy's bushes. Oh, so could you can have your bushes? Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, if you move to Tommy's bushes. That's fine. Uh, <coughs> I'm two thousand Q boy. I I, I don't know. 200 IQ boy. I'm I mean girl. girl. Oh, okay. Okay, so okay. <laughs> Looks like uh, Travis got to him, though. What did I, uh, what did I binge out um, this uh, this week? What did I, oh, there was something I did. Oh, I beat Portal. That's what it was. I beat Portal 1 for the first time. Um, I've finally been playing uh, Dragon Age Inquisition. I'm close to beating that. Were you talking about playing that like when we were at Gamers at one point? No, I finally bought it while I was at Gamers, but I just started playing it recently. That was one of David's like favorite games. It's a great game. 
Um, I also remember you being pissed at me because I didn't tell you till after the sale, but it was like the Mass Effect trilogy for five dollars. Oh, you were like, "Damn it!" I was like, "I'm sorry, I didn't know that you would want that." I picked up Dragon Warrior again. That's okay. I got that one. I do. I do have that one. Um, I actually finally beat the Mass Effect three last or the beginning of this year. It only took me forever. So, let's do... So, Chris was very nice, and he actually put up a whole bunch of pictures. I just have to do computer screen. Here we go. I uh, put up a whole bunch of pictures on our Discord of, like, his family's Halloween decorations. Oh, yeah, I saw that. That's oh, good. sweet. Um, so, That's I wanted to actually stuff. pop in and give his house a nice shout-out, because yeah. this is pretty fucking epic. Sweet. Um, he's even got some good daylight pictures to kind of show. Like, they do a good job. Like, they got a whole hellhound. Like, isn't that cool? That's awesome. That's cool. Um, let's see Very here. Cool. There's... I didn't cycle through all of them. Um, oh, look at all those gravestones. Right? Oh, my God. They really put in the effort. Like, yeah. for Halloween, this is... Slam dunk. Dude, right? that's going to be oh, our house good. as soon as we buy one. Yeah. Like... Um, oh. That's super cool. Uh, so, yes. Hey, you guys like it? Yes, Chris. Very We, cool. we very much enjoy it. <laughs> There was one. Where did it go? I, there was like a zombie one. I, maybe it was that one that I saw. I can't remember. There are some really cool ones, though. I mean, these are all. I like the one that says Fido with the dog next to it. I like, yeah. I like the basketball one. <laughs> this is all fantastic. This is super good audio, by the way. And then he also put in. Oh, let's see if we can get. Um, he also did uh, under music. He dropped in. Yeah, here we go. He dropped in. Oh my god, it's, this one's awesome. Yeah, the Slash Street Boys. They're doing Backstreet <laughs> Have you seen Boys. This? I, don't know, I want it that away. It's it's fantastic. So if you get a chance, check that out. That's gonna be up on the uh, that's yeah, it's up on the Facebook page today. I'll check so, that out. Yeah, it's it's very enjoyable. It's the, like I want it that way, but it's with all the traditional Halloween slasher film characters. Nice. Oh yeah, <laughs> I I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. Uh, but yeah, I binged out Portal, or I played out Portal 1 uh, for the first time ever. Um, it was like a four-hour <coughs> stream. I just decided to start at like 10 o'clock at night. Uh, and, it, and like the only reason why I stuck it out so long was because I wanted to beat it. I was like, I got towards the end. I'm like, come on, come on. Have you I, played Portal 2 yet? I have not. This is, that's my next, um, my next <coughs> thing. Um, Portal 2 or, oh, so... Red Dead Two comes out on Friday, so I might. Oh, nice, I know. That. Yeah, I might buy that uh, for my birthday. I did buy a Xbox Live Gold card. Um, that was my cop out for my birthday. So my thirtieth birthday was this weekend. Level thirty complete. Um, oh, I never noticed. That's cool. Yeah, my <laughs> just my wife actually made this shirt for me. Oh, did she really? Nice. Yeah. Um, so what happened was, was we, uh, she bought me this Walmart shirt and then she has someone who actually has like a printing set. They call it like a cricket, I think, or something. And so they designed this and then she, so this is like unique. She just made this. Oh, another shout out actually, if you guys want to go to, um, they must have all wait, stuff what? Made made. wife? Yes. Okay. I told you I'm married. Um, <laughs> What? <laughs> Stalker doesn't it's crying cry. like no. <laughs> Broke their heart. Um, this was a conversation we had on the last one. I don't know how you forgot that through the whole conversation, but, um, but yeah, um, she made this for me. Um, I can't remember where I was gonna go with it. I don't know. She goes. She's like. She kept telling me on the day of my like birthday. She's like, you gotta wear it. You gotta wear it. I'm like, I just said like, no. I'm saving this for the podcast. And she kind of rolled her eyes. But to me, this was like something I had to wear for the podcast. Like, oh, this is totally... Me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> shout out. Um, yeah, Nick's like... It's... Shout out, actually. Um, well, so the thing about me wearing clothes twice is like me getting through a day without getting barbecue sauce or some shit on my shirt. That's true. It's a goddamn miracle. <laughs> um, so, like, I remember one day I went to a big meal and I actually came out without anything on my shirt. And I'm like, I'm an adult now. <laughs> <laughs> so... So yeah, so big shout out. We are actually selling t-shirts now and I'm going to be designing more and more. Um, but we have the first one, uh, which is Dritz and it just, 
It's one of his quotes that he he came in fucking yelling one day. He just goes, I got to He goes, all right, fuckers, let's start this podcast. I got a chest full of hate and a mouth full of yelling. And we were not broadcasting. And I was so <laughs> mad because that would have been amazing like if he had just stormed in like that. Yeah. So I did. I do have like it's a shitty cut out of his face, but I've got a cut out of his face and it just says I've got a chest full of hate and a mouth full of yelling. You can buy the shirts. It's on Teespring. Uh, you can buy the shirts. You can buy uh, onesies. You can buy leggings. You can buy mugs. I got it all. Like I got it all. But we're going to do a little more design work. Chris has actually been coming up with some of the ideas for us as well. Uh, hopefully we're going to, if I can find the pocket tee, we're going to do put a little nerdy and then just point at your pocket. Um, so that's pretty cool. A lot of these are Chris's ideas too. He's, he's got some good ideas. However, and then I was actually thinking about taking all of our faces and putting them on leggings. Like it would just be leggings with our faces all the way down. And then like just another nerdy on the butt. <laughs> it's like, what's his face is trying to push the envelope there. Uh, I'm Jay's little slave. Uh, we're not even going to finish that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, okay. That's cool. Well, we appreciate it. Thank you. Like, oh, again. Uh, so if you follow us on Twitter, you can tweet us out. We will, you will pop up in the stream. So feel free to follow us, tweet or retweet any of our tweets and you will, it'll, it'll pop up. Um, my favorite, video clips so far i did i tried to actually get your explanation because it's about a minute and a half to two minutes i think it's like 210 with a little promo added to it um but it's your explanation of what makes a hard game oh yeah yeah i tried to get it on twitter and it was like no and i was like Ugh. ghostbusters that's my that's gonna be my new claim to fame because hey so donnie annoying. is that dicaprio why can't i read shit today i can yes. never read that Donnie DiCaprio. Donnie DiCaprio! What's up? Hey, girlfriend. Oh, is that... Maybe they know you. I don't know. Look at Discord, Jay. I'm going to look afterwards. We're going to save that. <laughs> uh, this is not a... This is not a for-podcast moment, I'm guessing. So... Uh, so yeah, um, and then again, guys, you can actually check us out at, um, Scener slash, oh yeah, Nightbot's back. Nightbot's <laughs> here! Finally making to ruin place. everybody's fun! Yep. Ooh, Danny DiCaprio following! Thank you so much for the follow. I love that Mario thing. Oh, wait, was that about my tattoo? That one? Yeah, what, yeah. Well, let's talk about your tattoo. Oh, uh, it's there's an organization called To Write Love on Her Arms. It's a charity organization for <clears throat> specifically for teenagers, but also for people in general um, who have suicidal tendencies or self harm or cutting tendencies. So, <clears throat> it's a charity organization that raises money for counseling or I don't know hospitalizations and things like that so That's cool. yeah it's a charity that i really believe in things like that so i got the tattoo a couple a couple years ago a year and a half ago oh <laughs> he's calling dritz the rage machine um that's awesome yeah i yeah. wish i could get a tat like I want tattoos. I just don't have money or time or ideas. Yeah. I have I have ten tattoos. Um, this is the only one that's super super visible. Um, it's tied from like this little one here, which is my nerdy tattoo. One of my nerdy tattoos. Um, I know a lot of people get the semicolon one. Oh yeah. Um, the semicolon project is what a lot of people don't know is their counseling is all Christian based. Oh. Okay. It's all of their counseling has. As Christianity based uh, counseling, so I didn't want anything. I didn't. I didn't want a tattoo that had religious basis in it. So yeah. this particular organization does not have any religious basis in the. Anyways, that's good. Read. Don't read. So, case. <laughs> Danny. Danny DiCaprio. Oh. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's. It's a. Uh... It's a cool organization and something that I've always really liked. 
they do a lot of org- uh, charity work. They always set up a booth at what's that? Uh, the big punk. It's like a weekend festival that they've been doing for friggin' ever. Um, I think I know what Anyways. you're talking about. I don't fully remember. So. It's gone. Anyways. So yeah, if I were to get a tattoo, yeah. and I've seen a lot of people getting this now, and it's so cool. But a lot of them have like the three friends to do it with, or like the three three siblings, where they get wisdom, power, and courage, mm-hmm. like on their hand, and and that's awesome. I really want to do like the courage, but I want it to light up, like be the glow in the dark tattoo. Yeah, those. Are I really thought cool. that would be really really awesome. Um. I have... And then maybe Borderlands. I don't know why, but I still like the Vault Hunter. Like, just the idea of being a Vault Hunter would be awesome. And I decided when I'm 60, I want to, like, if I can get muscles, I want the bat symbol tattooed right on my chest. Like, when I'm old. Just... <laughs> I have a Mandalorian tattoo on one calf. I have a lotus, black lotus on one calf. I have um, a flaming rose, a melting snowflake, a panicle, a... Um, a sun that's made out of feathers. I have roses on this side. I have a girl that takes up half my back <laughs> that has a feathered wing and a devil wing. Um, and then this little onk with a smiley face that's yeah. from a comic book What's behind my ear. So what comic book? It's called Dork Tower. Dork Tower. Yeah, it's from like the late '90s, early 2000s, and mm. makes fun of like gamers. Oh really? The character that wore this onk as a necklace, and it's usually the necklace that I wear, um, her name is Gilly. Gilly. She is a really into goth culture. She's a vamp LARPer. Oh, okay. <laughs> so she does Vampire the Masquerade. She considers herself a perky goth. She's really into goth culture. She's really into like vampire LARPing and gaming. Uh, but she's super hyper. She's So <laughs> she considers herself the perky goth. Because while she's into the whole goth culture and all that, she's just super hyper. And growing up, I always totally was considered myself the perky goth and was like, I relate to that so hardcore. Perky goth. Perky goth. Perky goth. I. So... <laughs> it's so funny. So when I was talking to Zalthara, she's like, you know, she's, she's talking to me. She goes, uh, you're. So she starts explaining the bat thing to me and she goes, you're obviously not a goth. So let me break this down <laughs> for you. And I was like, mm-hmm. Definitely. Here I am Cat. in my blue flannel shirt. Cats out of the bag. Like for the interview, and I'm like, definitely not a goth. Like I, I get along with like almost anyone. Um, that like, basically, if you can be a reasonable human being, I can spend time around you. You know, like almost anyone I can get along with. However, um, I was just never like, just never friends with any guy. Like I don't think my grade or high school. Oh, you know what? Maybe was Devin was Devin to classified as goth? Devin's totally goth. I didn't know. Devin is totally goth. In fact, I just never and I never got into that discussion. You know, Devin is Devin is known for being somebody who does not own anything that isn't black. <laughs> That's all. true. That is Devin true. Does not, like Devin owns one shirt that isn't black, and it's only because it's a motorcycle shirt. Okay. So, specifically, <laughs> and it's only because they were out of the black ones. Oh man! Oh, and they were out of the black ones when he wore it. Out of the black ones. What color is it? It's white with black on it. Like ah, it's, it's, it's it still converted. Must have been uh, some inner turmoil though. It yeah, was exactly. actually. <laughs> oh man! Devin and I specifically met at the goth bar he worked at. Oh really? That's cool. So yeah, okay. Goth so bar, Devin, yeah. I don't know if he explored that as much in high school, but I never had that conversation. With yeah. him or I've anyone seen about of goth. Him in high school, he was totally goth. In okay, <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I'm like elusive to <clears throat> this thing. So, like Zalthar is just explaining to me just this idea of bats, and then, uh, it, and it was, it was highly entertaining. I saw a crow viciously murder a bat downtown in Grinnell. Oh my god! Was, I was pretty pissed at that crow. Do you remember the bat we had in the basement at Gamers? Um, it was there for like what a week or so. I think I remember someone being like, "Hey, there's a bat downstairs," <laughs> and I was like, "Cool." I was <laughs> like, it got trapped in the basement, and so I like had stuff that needed to go downstairs, and so I just put a sign that says "Batman Basement." <laughs> <laughs> Please don't like let it escape into the store. 
I had a I took pictures of a bat that I caught and released for end gamers. So it's just hanging out in our display window. Like Oh Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, they I kinda... catch you, but I'm gonna snap some pictures. <clears throat> You're adorable, so <laughs> I remember there was a bat over by the movie theater that I worked at in Platteville and it would like I had to chase it away because what it would do is it would sit by the door and then anybody who wanted to enter would be like, ah! <laughs> be like, oh my God. And I was like, that, that just can't happen. So I was like, get out of here. You're like, go buddy. Like go be somewhere else. There's a whole downtown. I I'm lived like, in a, oh. I lived in this duplex for a little while um, where the, I was upstairs and the downstairs neighbor was a friend of mine. And I was so excited because I'd never had a neighbor before that I knew like, always growing up, you never knew your neighbors. You didn't talk to your neighbors. That was weird. I didn't live in, like, yeah. a small town where you talk to your neighbors. <laughs> so I was really excited when we ran out of neighbor. sugar that I was like, this is so cute. I'll actually go to my neighbor and get sugar. I thought that was going to be hilarious. So I came running down the stairs to ask for sugar. And she opens the door and starts apologizing profusely. And I was like, what? Are you okay? And she's like, aren't you here to ask about the screaming? And I was oh. like, the what? <laughs> Apparently, seconds before I knocked on the door, a bat had been in her house, and her <laughs> husband was chasing it out of the broom while she was screaming murder, and wow. I didn't hear any of this, and she thought that I was running downstairs to check on her because she was screaming bloody murder, and of course, she was videotaping the whole thing while she was screaming bloody murder, so she shows me the video of her screaming. Even better. <laughs> Even better. I didn't hear any of it. But yeah, she showed this video of her husband like chasing around the house to this bat. But no, it was good to know yep. that we couldn't hear anything around the basement. Yep. I uh, kind of bad actually. If you somebody's blood curling cries, you can't hear from the couldn't hear anything. <laughs> oh man, the the funny thing is, I remember talking to Nick like the day after. Um, he's like, yeah, I thought there was like a whole domestic abuse thing going on over at your house. And then I walk by and you guys are all just wearing Packer gear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I remember yeah, that. because Grace, Grace gets loud. Like she's, <laughs> she's so bad and she gets like, she gets legit angry at the Packers. Like, like I get with video games, she gets with the Packers. Oh, wow. I'm like, Jesus. You do get pretty mad at video games. Yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> I Nick do. has heard that too. Yeah. She referred me too. No, actually, really? the only thing I've little legit like you guys were the best neighbors, and it was because <laughs> the only thing I've ever heard from you guys was laughter. And I'm like, if there is anything to never complain about, is like hearing some laughter every now and then Shut from the your fuck neighbors. Up. Yeah, it's like because <laughs> I just hear ha 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 ha, and I'm like, oh, they're having a good time over there. <laughs> and then you know, and it would be like. You guys were like never late at night. Like it was always like you know six, seven o'clock at night. I'd be watching my own TV and I just hear the faint sounds of laughter. I'm like, not a problem. Like you guys were always the best neighbors. It's the guy next to you that was a goddamn oh, yeah. psychopath. <laughs> yeah, he was. Like, and then I was talking to Sarah at the at my birthday party. Like, so they they came, um, and she was saying like he's come out like peed on the tree next yeah, to did. like oh, one God. of the girls that was staying with you with this for a little while. She like, read under a tree, and then he'd come out like it's behind our duplex, or yeah, like, townhomes or whatever, and he would just like pee on the other side of the tree without noticing her. Yeah, like that's right in the backyard. So creepy. Like it'd be one thing if he just like went and peed on his own tree, like something that was behind his house, but like he went and like there was someone sitting on that tree, and he legitimately walked up and pissed on it, like. <laughs> And not even, like, another random dude. It was, like, some innocent girl, like, reading a book by herself, like, just, you know, uh, and he's just like, I'm going to pee on this. Yeah. That's so, creepy. I'm guessing he was so drunk he didn't even notice her. Yeah. <laughs> he's a he's an angry feller. Um, but, yeah. Me. Who wasn't... Who hasn't peed on a tree? Soka G, you're telling me you haven't peed on a fucking no, tree? Soka G. Oh, wait. Yeah, Soka G... Uh, Danny oh, wait, DiCaprio okay, said, "Who hasn't peed on a tree?" Oh, that's what I was reading. I have. Well, I'll be honest. Like, I have the the like the weird animalistic <clears throat> tendencies to be like, I'd like to pee on the side of something. I think that's why like those urinals that go all the way down to the ground are awesome because it is like you're peeing on the wall. But like, I I I also am a like a grown human being that understands boundaries. Yeah, you know. I mean, I've been on a tree when I'm out camping and it's raining outside and I don't have to worry about it, like, 
running into someone's tent or something. Yeah. Like, yeah. you still have to pay attention to your surroundings and who's near you. It reminds me of that, um, oh, speaking of, this is something in the news that I did not, I forgot to share the article and I did not mention. Uh, the guy who directed Harold and Kumar go to White Castle passed away. No, that's too bad. He was like in his 50s, which means he's still fairly young, which is it's pretty upsetting. Um, however, it reminds me of that scene in Harold and Kumar where, like, they have the Jamie Kennedy, um, like, cameo where, like, I was like, yeah, it's Kumar's, like, out peeing on a bush, and, like, Jamie Kennedy walks up and, like, starts peeing on the bush next to him. Like, they're in the middle of the woods, and he's, like, completely hammered, and he has, like, this gross mustache. And, like, Kumar's just like, excuse me, um, why are you, are you, are you peeing right here? And he's like, excuse me? He's like, hey, yeah, why are you peeing right here? He's like, is your bush? Is this your special bush? And, like, and he just looks at me, he's like, you fucking tree hug? <laughs> it's like what <laughs> like that that scene still sticks out with me over time i actually rewatched like all my favorite movies from when i was younger like all my favorite comedies like in a row and then like realized that some of them don't hold up oh, as well yeah, over not. time yeah like Harold and kumar is still really good but it's not as good but the one that surprisingly held up the best was sex drive like that movie still holds up for me. Oh man, Sex Drive is so funny. It's on uh, Amazon Prime. It's like, so this kid is a teenager, and he's being catfished, and he's going. He steals his brother's like GTO Judge to go and like sleep with this girl, you know, to lose his virginity and stuff. And what's interesting is this is a book, and in the book, his best friend is this jock character who supposedly gets all the girls. But in the movie, they switched around. They had Clark Duke play his best friend. And Clark Duke is the opposite of a jock. And so he plays, like, this guy that just has swagger because of confidence. Like, it's all confidence. And he has this amazing discussion with him about confidence. Because he goes, look at these two guys here. They're my favorite characters. Um, they're just two go goofy girls. They, they just look at girls and they go, what's up, what's up? Any girl that passes by, they're like, what's up, what's up? What's up? <laughs> and, like... They like just yell shit out like my I, I about died but he's like sitting there playing his Game Boy and it, like the girl walks up he's like what's up what's up what's up and then she leaves and he goes I'm uncircumcised and he just goes back to it like and he goes look at these guys he goes they are fucking killers when it comes to openers they just don't know how to close <laughs> like that's their problem so it's just this conversation about sex but it's it's um it's about teenagers and confidence and like you know just the all of these issues and 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 not seeing what's in front of you because he has a best friend that he falls in love with is asking how old we are um i 30 <laughs> i'm 30 i turned 30 last week so level 30 complete that's my 30 t-shirt from 30 uh four a couple of weeks ago I think. yeah oh yeah you don't have to say your age, but... <laughs> oh, I was going to say, are they asking us, or is... Oh, I I'm, think so. I'm 29. Know. Maybe they're asking, mm -hmm. uh, what's his face? Who That's what I was wondering, too. Was... Uh, last time, Sokoji said they they were an 11-year-old boy. <laughs> um, I don't know how much I believe you, I'm Soka. Sure like, yeah. You ask. Yeah, so uh, if you're wanting to go with continuity, Soka, that's just <laughs> that last time, that's what you said. So, um, but yeah, those were... Those were like some of my favorite movies to kind of rewatch. Accepted was another one. That one didn't hold up as well, unfortunately. Yeah, I haven't seen that one. What didn't forever. hold up for me uh, as well, I still enjoyed it, was Batman Returns. Really? Yeah. Uh, Not as well, oh, I still enjoyed it. This, which... uh, when I was younger, I didn't realize just how like random and cohesive. Parts yeah. Thus, why people yell it's a bad movie. But... I still or like no, it. wait, Batman Returns. Batman is... Returns. Oh no, people don't say that one's bad. That's the I mean, second Tim Burton. It's, right? Yeah, it's not bad, but like it didn't like it didn't hold up as well. As I was thinking of um, Batman. Uh, I don't know the Forever? other ones. Yeah, Batman Forever and Batman, Batman and Robin. And, yeah, Batman and Robin. Those were the ones that people don't. Uh, let's say sixteen dash three. Yeah, okay. <laughs> 21. 21? Or 19. Um, like 18 to me. Is that an 18? Or a... Oh, know. 16 minus 3. Maybe that's what you're trying to say. I don't, I don't know. I can't keep up. <laughs> I woke up this morning. <laughs> I was up pretty late. Like, what was I doing? Oh, yeah. I was watching Stargate SG-1. <laughs> 
I'm so mad too because I'll, and I'll say this in the in the thing now. Like so, when I was playing with the scenery thing, for some reason, it recorded up to about halfway, and then it didn't record any more um, of of Stargate SG One. So I didn't get my end reactions to rewatching Stargate, which weren't terribly impressive. Like <coughs> you know, I had a few jokes here and there, but other than that, it was just me watching Stargate SG One. <laughs> like. But yeah, so uh, we'll probably actually end the podcast here. Um, if you guys want to follow us um, later on, so we're going to watch Monster Squad. Um, this is going to be Tiana's first time seeing it. Uh, and then uh, we're going to put that up later on. So it's going to be on scener.com slash jamp, J-A-N-P. If you're watching this later, that's going to be in the link in the description. Also, on Monday, around 4.30 p.m. Central, feel free to check out. We're going to do that interview with Pink Smurf. Uh, and if you're interested and you're looking for something to watch, uh, definitely check out that interview with Zalthara, the Queen of Bats. Um, so that that's only about an hour-long interview. I'm going to keep those about an hour long. So definitely worth a check out. Um, definitely a very interesting interview. She does some really good charity work. Uh, both suicide prevention and bat uh, bat sanctuary in Pennsylvania. So check those out if you get a chance. And then check us out at Scener. You can do, again, scener.com slash jamp. Uh, I'm going to do other stuff where I watch different things, and then hopefully I'm going to be inviting people in and out at some point to watch more stuff. But for Halloween, I thought we could watch Monster Squad. I keep wanting to say Suicide Squad, <laughs> which is, I mean, it could be... It's got a little spooky theme to it, doesn't it? I mean, they've got a witch and... I still haven't watched it. I've actually yeah, been a... borrowing it from someone for months <laughs> so that I could watch it and I just haven't taken the time. To I that... We need a few drinks of me to watch that one. That's like, yeah. I still have... Um, what do I have? It's the... Uh, um, mm, I still have the Mission Impossible series from Tommy and I stopped it too and I haven't started again. We also, um, Devin found out that I had never seen the original Halloween movie, so instead of us, like, renting it or something, he just went and bought it. Oh, no. <laughs> so that we can watch it tonight. First one's good. That's yeah. awesome. So, guys, and then I'm going to actually... This misses Tom, which is... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you over to someone named uh, The Pacifist. Chris also has some more t-shirt ideas. So I will. Oh, Chris has more T-shirt ideas. Drop, drop DM me on on uh, the Discord, Dritz. Let me or Tom. Pff, shit, Chris. <laughs> Dritz I'm and so Tommy sorry. And Dritz, Chris, Dritz and Tommy equals Chris. Yes. <laughs> uh, so we'll see you guys next time. I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.